The Crippled God by Steven Erickson. I've done it. I've finished the main 10 Malazan books. Oh, it feels good. Oh, so I, I do not, I do not want this to turn into a series review of Malazan because that is a separate video. I'm going to try and keep the discussion to just the crippled God and my thoughts on the matter. Yet, I need to start this by saying there are clear pillars of fantasy people look to as the big boys everyone needs to read for various reasons, whether it's Wheel of Time, Lord of the Rings, Discworld, but Malazan is absolutely in that discussion. It is one of the ones that is brought up nearly every single time people ask for greatest fantasy series of all time, and it's usually in the top three for people who have read it all the way through. And not to overgeneralize, but I feel like those series that are always put in the top, the ones I mentioned, like Lord of the Rings or A Song of Ice and Fire, are all there for kind of distinct reasons. Discworld for its ability to use absurdism to make extraordinary commentary. Wheel of Time for its work with culture and evolving tropes. A Song of Ice and Fire for being such effective anti-fantasy. Lord of the Rings for being the thing that made the genre what it is. Blah, 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 blah. Malazan is there for me. In my view, my perspective, because of Erickson's delivery of theme and exploration of ideas. Nobody's done it like him, and the crippled god absolutely proves that in my opinion. It's reframed my entire view on the series as a whole. And that's also, obviously, I sat down with Erickson, had a conversation as well. That shook up how I was approaching Malazan from there. And I just have this gut feeling that rereading Malazan right now would probably be an extreme extraordinary experience. And I really wish I had the time to do it. I don't. Uh, but yeah, there's so much to digest, and it's actually why I've kind of sat on the book for a minute before getting into the actual review. I'll keep this spoiler free, but let's go ahead and talk about what I loved and a couple criticisms I had for The Crippled God as a whole. First and foremost, the beginning of the book is probably the weakest to me. Erickson is kind of just grabbing handfuls of all the plot lines he has set up throughout the series of Malazan and bringing them into focus for this final book. And you as the readers kind of have to accept, okay, here's what we need to know where this is going to go directionally for the final Malazan entry. And no, not every single thing set up throughout all 10 books comes into major play here. That's just something you have to get ready for. And it, it, it might leave some people wondering, like, why would you then set up so many things? Because we've kind of been trained through the MCU age we live in that, you know, everything builds towards one zenith, the perfect pyramid narratively, and that's the point of setting up all these different events. So you have your own self-contained plot lines, and each one lends to the greater good in a direct story sense. That, I do not necessarily think, is the point of every Malazan book. Instead, it's setting up in a thematic purpose for this final book, because the crippled god delivers on, I would say, nearly every idea, every discussion Erickson has set up in the previous nine. And I love that. I, I don't, I didn't feel the need to revisit every character because I felt like the ghost, the shadow of their own individual like plots coming in and weighing in here in indirect ways that have just impacted me as the reader. And that's a truly beautiful uh, experience. That's something that I have not necessarily felt before because, you know, oh, if sometimes a plot line doesn't affect the ending, you're like, why was that there? I never feel why was that there because everything was written quality enough where I'm like, it served. Okay, I'm getting into a series review here. <laughs> but okay, that's the point of The Crippled God I want to say though, is it's this very nice wrap up bow in the meta sense for the series, not the direct narrative or character, but I have not felt as catharsisized is not a word, but I'm gonna say it, <laughs> for a series in a long time. I'm not necessarily suffering from the greatest case of post-series depression. I'm just not, like I actually feel just very complete, very, that's a nice experience I had. I want to reread it, but I'm not, sad, partially because this was not as dark an ending as I was expecting, so I'm not gonna get into spoilers, I was expecting something very dark, and instead it's more of a, 
mixed bag, uh, not in a bad sense, in a very good sense. It felt very realistic, which again sticks to the theme of Malazan, which is a high, high epic fantasy world where the flaws of humanity are never forgotten. And I mean humanity in a general sense, I'm talking about other species that kind of suffer from, or races that suffer from similar problems. I feel like for enjoying characters within Malazan, I've, I've been like a man who can channel who's had a block put on him. Like I can't break through this wall. I've stretched it, I've cracked it, I've started seeing the light, and finally the crippled god, especially when it came to Yaden, yeah, Yaden, yeah, yo, yo, I, I didn't, I'm dyslexic and I didn't listen to the audiobook, however you say his name. I'm gonna go ahead and say it in here, Yaden might be my new favorite Malazan character to overtaking Whiskey Jack and Animander Rake. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, for those of you who want just a proof of concept of how good of ideas, which is something I should have gotten more into in terms of, like, actual artifacts than the series Steven Erickson is, look up Hust Swords. I think you can do so without necessarily getting into too deep of spoilers. Just read, like, the first bit on the wiki. It's such a cool idea, and it's used so well was like this final breakthrough in this book where I, I shattered it, I get it, I loved him as a character, and it's another one of the reasons why I'm looking back going, now I need to reread all 10 books, because if I do, I feel like the characters will each hit me very differently than Imba did before. And I'm saying all this without even mentioning the fact that people have commented a thousand times over that the foreshadowing in Malazan, once you've read it and you go back through, the details you pick up second time make the narrative delivery sense I was mentioning before actually come through even stronger. And maybe my biggest regret with Malazan is that I didn't just binge the series. I didn't just sit down and read them all in two months. Instead, it's been more than a year. And that's probably to the detriment. I did forget a lot. It's why I think in this final book, I'm leaning very heavily on the ideas because those stick with with you no matter what. You may forget a small plot line, you may forget a couple characters, but you're never gonna forget the ideas a book throughout this series discussed because of how thoroughly it's done and how forefront in the text it always is. So I was finding immense enjoyment in that aspect and I feel like the other elements I maybe didn't connect with as much would be closer to matching uh, once I've gone through again. There's this Obviously, throughout Malazan, if you've been paying any attention at all, or you're even slightly aware of the series, you know it's dark. There are slaughters, there are purges, just people dying, massacres, you know, awful, awful things, the real ramifications of war, and just, I would say, continual abuse and negativity. What was accomplished in this final book, though, was showing the strength of compassion, the strength of working together, forgiveness, being willing to share, which sounds very basic, yet the impact of these moments somehow feels just as substantial, just as weighted as those negative ones, which is just beautiful. Like, it's, it's really wonderful to see an author not back down in a rather grim dark series of showing the other side of the coin, of showing like, yes, horrible things are very often done, but there is also the flip side where there is strength in unity, there is strength in giving an olive branch and that's something you don't always see when authors are trying to go so the other direction and that is just going to elevate the other side of the coin while deliver a surprising beam of light that I think is one of the reasons the crippled god emotionally landed so strongly for me. I've consistently said that Memories of Ice is my favorite Malazan book. It still might be, but Crippled God is in contention for overthrowing it. I need to sit on it for longer, which I had low expectations going into this one. I had so many comments were like, based off the criticisms you had, we don't think you're gonna like uh, the Crippled God as much as many of the others. So I went in going, ah, all right, this is probably gonna be one of the lower tier Malazan books for me. A lot of people actually were saying that the ending does not deliver, which I very much so disagree with. This delivered for me in every sense that the series was aiming for. But let's go ahead and just get into more of the, okay, hard number stuff. For pacing, I mean, Malazan's never been quick. I've definitely been on a kick recently of, hey, if you can make your book tight, if you can cut out all fat and structure it marvelously, I'll give you all the bonus points in the world. Malazan's never going to do that. Erickson's indulgent, and it's done well enough though that it's not gonna bother me a ton, even though I'm kind of really reeling against that habit 
uh, just currently, I guess, because of how much I'm reading in general. I'm going to go ahead and say I'm not detracting as much for that reason, though if you are someone who is frustrated by a book that really takes its time, that could bother you here. So structure and pacing, your mileage may vary. Character though, Erickson is showing up as strong as he ever has. Often when he comes out to throw his characters, it can feel uh, a bit disconnected, which, you know, we've gotten into that very deeply here on this channel, even with the man himself. But I did not feel that disconnect here. I attribute that a lot to my own reframing and shifting of priorities when it comes to reading his books. And I think he has generally continually improved throughout the writing of this story. Yes, as giving as I'm being here, I bet if I went back and reread Gardens of the Moon, I would still have a drastically more critical review because it's just not as polished as we're seeing at this point. The plot, it's a lot of the typical Erickson you've come to expect. He writes to these grand moments that are just bombastic. They explode off the page and you will be feeling everything he wants you to in a narrative sense. Uh, you might be confused at times, but you'll just feel the epic coming out of the text. He's not the most communicative, concise writer, but you're gonna get used to that if you're at this point in the series. But then yeah, the thematic, the ideas, the narrative level is maybe the strongest I've seen from Erickson and maybe the strongest I've seen from a fantasy epic. The feelings you will have are gonna be exactly the feelings he's intending you to have. The ideas are going to be explored as deeply as they could be. And of course, you're going to ponder, think on, so many character decisions, so many implications because of this more meta element I'm so nuts about. There's one moment I want to touch on specifically where very, 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 very vague spoilers, where there's a magical element coming into play to pretty strongly impact the direction this story is going to go in. And the modern fantasy reader in me was going, hey, I don't fully understand this magic system. I don't know its limits. I don't know its lines. So does this really feel earned to me? Is there as much weight as there could be? Yeah, because this idea that softer magic systems are not as weighty in the text, is not as stakes defining as hard magic systems can be. I, I would say yes, generally, you need to work harder to have a soft magic system give you what a hard magic system just kind of naturally comes with, but it absolutely still can. And that scene proved this to me without any doubt. Like, it's just proven. Textbook, case done. I still felt invested and the stakes of the situation because everything built around this moment. And I feel like if this had been a harder magic system at play, then yeah, a lot of things that pro soft magic system people value would have been lost. And when you're dealing with gods, I mean, that's not really a Spoiler, it's called the crippled god. Those things should exist. Gods and hard magic systems for me almost always come with a disconnect. And so the softer magic system here allowed a lot more natural blend for the elements that were at play for this story. And overall, of course, for The Crippled God, I'm feeling a nine out of 10. It's a little messy at the beginning, and I still feel a slight communication disconnect from Erickson, but this is right up there with Memories of Ice, which I maintain to this day is one of the best fantasy books I've read. And so, yeah, uh, that's, this is one hell of a banger of an ending to Malazan for me, and I'm excited to get to some of the outlying stories as well. They're not a part of the main 10, and I hope eventually to get to a reread where I can binge this series within a month or two and really take in all at once because there were a lot of smaller story elements I forgot because it's been such a significant chunk of time to get through it. And I, uh, yeah, I really look forward to doing that. Anyway, guys, like and subscribe if you have not already. Look forward to a Malazan series review coming on the channel before too, too long. And have a good one, y'all. Peace. Should I wait till I reread the series to do a series review? I don't know. Peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreon, Ali Demarianis. And I also have another one here for Angela Alomari. All caps in the first. Gotta respect the all caps.